Cause we got a good thing Don't know if I'ma see you again Okay, so I just posted my Whoa Wednesday. Well, I'm probably going to post this video really late at night because that just adds to the scariness. But in the Whoa Wednesday, and if you didn't catch it, I'll link it down below so that you can go and watch it and keep up with the drama in our fandom. But in the Whoa Wednesday, I did say that, you know, this was the last Thriller Story Thursday. And I also said that I did indeed have an announcement to make. So let's make that announcement. So a couple people not too long ago asked me when am I going to do another Q&A because they missed the last one that I did. Well, I'm here to tell you guys that I will be doing a Q&A on Monday, so send in your questions. <laughs> I'm going to post a, po uh, a picture on my Instagram. I don't know what picture yet. I j just know there's going to be a post on my Instagram. Okay, look, so you can either go to Instagram and you can leave your comments there. Um, if you follow me on Twitter, I'm also going to tweet and I'm also going to post on my fan page Instagram as well. And you can also comment down below any questions that you guys will want to ask me so that I can do this Q&A on Monday. The reason why I'm throwing all this other stuff in is for you to go follow my social medias because that's, why not? So yeah, you can ask me anything, whether if it involves, you know, college or my life or One Direction or Jonas Brothers or if you want my opinion on some things whether it be in our fandom or just in any other fandom or anything that's blowing up or anything like that if you want me to react to some things uh, feel free to ask me and I'll react to some things too if you want me to and you know just just be whatever just be just say just ask whatever you want to ask me okay and we're, I'm gonna have a Q&A on Monday and I'm gonna answer questions so okay so now we're going to do Thriller Story Thursday First thing I would like to say is that I apologize for not being as consistent with my Thriller Story Thursdays because I've been wanting to be more consistent, but because I've been MIA with my Woe Wednesdays as well, I haven't gotten a chance to properly do my Thriller Story Thursdays every single Thursday, so that kind of sucks, but hopefully next year will be better. Um, how I always end my Thriller Story Thursdays is I always read other people's stories and see what other paranormal things that people have been through so that's what we're going to do today we're going to read some scary stories and we're going to see where it leads us i have my hat <laughs> as always why is it always bent i need to give me a better hat okay we're going to do it like that so yeah we're just going to be reading scary stories and i'm just going to be reacting to them and we're going to have a good time okay so let's begin i heard one a father is laying in bed after just waking up. He grabs the baby monitor and walks to his desk in his office at home. He has his baby on the baby monitor and hears his wife singing to her. He cracks a smile as he hears his wife go to sleep, go to sleep, when suddenly the front door opens up and his wife comes in with groceries. Okay, <laughs> first of all, it always seems like people who got the baby monitors always got some creepy shit happening to them. So just keep the baby in your room and, and be happy about it. But what you need to do is you need to go get your child, get your wife who just came in with these groceries completely oblivious to what the hell is going on. Y'all need to leave. Y'all need to burn the house to the ground because no. Mommy told me never go in the basement, but I wanted to see what was making that noise. It kind of sounded like a puppy and I wanted to see the puppy. So I opened the basement door and tiptoed down a bit. I didn't see a puppy. And then mommy yanked me out of the basement and yelled at me. Mommy had never yelled at me before and it made me sad and I cried. Then mommy told me to never go into the basement again and she gave me a cookie. That made me feel better. So I didn't ask her why the boy in the basement was making noises like a puppy or why he has no hands or feet. We are not about to get into this whole torture. No, this is not Saw. A man leaves his house every morning to walk to work and passes a mental hospital surrounded by a wooden fence. Every morning the patients are out in the yard and he can hear them saying in unison 10 10 10 10. One day he gets curious and looks through the hole in the fence. Suddenly a stick shoots out and pokes him in the eye. Fuck he says to himself while walking away pissed off he can hear the patient saying 11 11 11. That one's kind of funny because Okay, if you didn't get it, I think that, like, okay, that the patients were counting all the people that they ever poked in the eye, and so whoever is curious and comes to check on why they're saying these numbers, and they poke them in the eye, and then they add to the list, and they say 11-11, so now they're waiting for the 12th victim. That's kind of funny. 
Woman survivalist and trained outdoors guide who loves to go solo camping returns home after two weeks of being in the bush and not seeing a single soul. Develops her disabled camera film to find a roll of film with numerous pictures of her sleeping at night on different nights. She has never gone camping or hiking since. Man, shit, I wouldn't. <laughs> I wouldn't either. There was a story about how a guy was driving through the mountains and came across a crash. The car wasn't damaged at all and almost deliberately placed in a in the middle of the road. He drove past and saw two people lying on the road. He pulls in front of the crash and then looks back to see the people sat up in 20 or so eyes reflecting, what? In his tail lights from the surrounding bushes. He slams on his gas and goes. This story scares me because this kind of thing does happen with mountain tribes who are either cannibalistic or crazy. See, with people and okay, what's up with people eating people? What? I don't want to know. No, but that's scary. They should be lucky he didn't bag up and knock everybody out. A young boy is sleeping in his bed on a usual night. He hears footsteps outside his door and peeps out of his eyes to see what is happening. His door swings open quietly to reveal a murderer carrying the corpse of his parents. Oh my gosh. After silently propping them up on the chair, he writes something on the wall in the blood of the dead bodies and then hides under the child's bed. The child is scared beyond belief. Shit, I would be too. He can't read the writing on the wall and he knows the man is under the bed. Like any child, he pretends that he slept through the whole thing and hasn't awoken yet. He lays still as the body's quiet, quietly hearing breaths from under the bed. An hour passes and his eyes are adjusted more and more to the darkness. He tries to make out the words, but it's a struggle. He gasps when he finally makes out the sentence. I know you're awake. He feels something shift underneath his head. Okay, <laughs> listen to me. <laughs> First of all, what I want to know is that he sees a murderer carrying his parents and then he sees the murderer go underneath his bed. I just feel like that's giving you the opportunity to run because then he has to slide from under the bed to run after you and at least you get somewhat of a head start. You know what I'm saying? But personally, I don't know what I do. Honestly, I would probably try to fight. I would probably lose, but I would try. You know, I, I, okay. Last night a friend rushed me out of the house to catch the opening act at the local bar's music night. After a few drinks, I realized my phone wasn't in my pocket. I checked the table we were sitting at, the bar, the bathrooms, and after no look, after no luck, I used my friend's phone to call mine. After two rings, someone answered, gave out a low raspy giggle, and hung up, but didn't answer again. I eventually gave gave it up as a last call, as a lost cause, and headed home. I found my phone lying on the nightstand where I left it. You see, there's just too much stuff going on. Okay. I can't deal. I haven't slept well since they entered the woods. What I told you about these damn woods. Some strange feeling is that old dark part of the mine made him itch. There were five of us. We were running so fast, trying not to be caught by the horde of cannibalistic lunatics behind us. One of the people in the group shouted, look, as he, point, as he was pointing to a room with a solid steel door. A panic room. I knew it was a panic room from as far as I could see the walls stacked with TVs that showed surveillance footage. We bolted for it and locked the door behind us. All I could do was exhale in relief and laugh. I was safe. They all went to sleep, not me. This was the opportunity I had been waiting on for a long time. I smiled as I took, my, took out my hunting knife, delighted by the thought that I would finally be able to scratch that itch. Okay, so him and his friends was running from the people that were cannibals just for them to fall asleep and for them to find out too late that he's a cannibal because he's gonna eat him. Well, yep, everybody, that was enough for stories for today. <laughs> it's just, it was, it's, no, I can't. Yeah, you guys, thank you so much for watching and I hope y'all enjoyed the small task of Thriller Story Thursdays that I had showed y'all even though it wasn't like a lot, it wasn't as eventful as it was last year but you know i still had a good time and hopefully y'all still did too thank you so much for watching and i hope y'all enjoy and i hope these scared y'all a little bit because i'm pretty fucking scared okay <laughs> thank you guys so much for watching and remember to leave your questions either down below on my twitter on my instagram wherever you want i will surely be seeing you all next time remember to keep your head up and smile and always know somebody has your back <laughs> Out of fuel, I'm running off of you. I'm running off of you. you.